Hi, I'm Lisa Ann Miller with W. Cushing and & Company, and in cooperation with Rogue Hooking Magazine, we're bringing you Third Thursdays with Lisa Ann. Today, we're going to sort out dyed wool. Last month, we delved into textures and how best to use them and how to look at the textures to make the most out of them. I'd like to thank Rogue Hooking Magazine. This is their latest issue. Uh, pick it up. It's got some very good articles in it. Make sure it's in your stash and your summer reading. And I'd like to thank them for continuing Third Thursdays with Lisanne. So, dyed wool. You see all the dyed wool here. How do you sort out dyed wool? Dyed wool now, in the old days, and I'm going back into the 70s, dyed wool was just almost a solid dyed piece and you used it with a little bit of modeling and it would come in a swatch. Something similar to this. Uh, this is a dyed piece of wool. It has a little bit of highs and lows. And then it would be swatched out. And swatched out means their values of color. There'd be everything from light to dark. Today, with today's fiber artists, the options are limitless. So we're going to start with a simple spot dye, some simple spot dyes. This is a spot die. This is a spot die called Hearts of Fire. And it's a spot die because it is a single color spot die. Uh, this is a single color spot die. It's red on red on red. So when you hook it, it hooks with highs and lows throughout the whole piece. And we're looking at our dyed wool the same way we would look at our textured wool. I'm pleating it. I'm rolling it and it already looks like a rose or Santa's suit. Uh, you can pick out and fussy cut the highs and lows, let them come where they may, um, but I can see a Santa suit, a rose, a poppy, all sorts of things. So this is a one color spot dye. Then we have multiple color spot dyes. Multiple color spot dyes, a lot of times, if you're not used to using dyed wool, confuse people. This is our mother of pearl. And everybody says to me at first, well, I don't want to use it for a baby rug. I'm not doing a baby rug. Mother of pearl is our number one best-selling dyed wool because it's so versatile. And when you start to put it together and pleat it, it is used for sky, it's used for snow, it's used for a soft background. This is a tricolor spot dye. And you can see all the colors play together. They're modeled together very lovely. They're nicely done. There's no gaps. So when you look at the spot dyes that are multiple colors and you want to see how it hooks, the background on ice skates for us is mother of pearl. And sometimes you'll see the blue, sometimes you'll see the pink, but it's an overall soft color. And if you're ever looking for the perfect snow wool, this is one of the most perfect snow wools you can have paired with a light blue and paired with another spot dye like Frosty or Jack Frost. But this is Mother of Pearl. This is a tricolor spot dye. There's three colors into that. Another dyed piece of wool, dyed wools that people like to use if you're going to go into dyed wool you haven't used a lot of it is over dye on texture this is our vertigra part of our um, vintage color collection and this you get a double play on this you get the texture beneath the beneath texture is cape cod plaid and you have the highs and lows of the dyed wool so you're able to have both things in one. You get the texture, you get the dyed wool. It's useful for a lot of things. A lot of people like this because if they have the texture, they pair it with the texture so that they know it goes together. Uh, this works for multiple things. Uh, especially in pictorials, orientals, it's great for orientals. Uh, because it gives you a high and low, a worn look. It's a vintage color. It works perfectly. So this is over dye on texture. Now, this spot dye is a tricolor. This is Meeting House Blue. And this is a little bolder. This is a bolder spot dye. Meeting House Blue 
works well in geometrics. Again, we're going to pleat it to see how it looks. It makes great rocks. It makes a great rocky edge like the coast of Maine. And when you look at it this way, you're thinking, what can I do with it? Bunch it up. Look at it. Take a look. And that really tells you all the colors and how they play. Another very, very soft, soft tricolor. This is almost a tone on tone, but it's not. It is three colors. It's soft as petals. It works great for blossoms, Lenten roses, magnolias, dogwoods, a background. It blends well with textures like tea berry pink textures, beige textures, whatever you would like. So this is soft as petals, and as you can see, when, they're, when it's more of a tone on tone, you can just fold it to see how it looks together. Now, you can also over dye on the sparkle wool. I, like, I love to use the silver sparkle wool. Uh, this is winter in the pines. When you dye on the sparkle, it will tighten up. This is not a cut, this is not a wool that you can go down to a three cut. The four cut, it gets a little fray. You can see the sparkle in it. The sparkle will come out. I recommend this for cuts five and up. Previously, you can go down to a three cut on all the other dyed wool. But the sparkle, it's a little bit looser. I have hooked with it in a four cut, but it can get a little frayed. So if you're hooking pine trees and you just want it to sparkle like snow, you can hook pine trees. You can hook uh, leaves. Anything you would like if you want it to glisten from water. It doesn't have to be snow. In Maine, we think of snow first. But it can be water. It could be water on a pond. Different things. But when you look at the sparkle wool, make sure you understand that you're not going to cut this in a two and a three. And this is our sparkle wool. Another sparkle wool is the Big Chill. And the Big Chill makes great rocks. And if you're looking for water on rocks, gleaning, things like that, there you go. And that's the Big Chill. Again, this is a tricolor. This is a little bolder. Uh, this is a little softer. The sparkles do come out when you cut it. And it just adds enough without being overpowering. So that is our sparkle, dying over dying on sparkle. Then in place of the swatches, a lot of people like depth of color. They want to switch from one color to another. And that's where our dip spots come in. This is peacock tail. And with our dip spots, with a dip spot, you get the breadth of color. So you're going to go from the darkest to the medium light. It's going to filter in with the green and go down to the green. So when you hook it, you get all the values of this color. So it goes from one end to the other. This is a great piece for an Oriental or a Persian. Of course, it will make a peacock tail. Uh, it's just wonderful, yes. And you can also split it. You can work and split it into its three or four pieces and use each piece, but the blend is so soft that it would look like you shaded as you hooked because it will automatically shade for you. So this is a dip spot, and we have a lot of dip spots. Uh, we find that they're very useful. This is our Zinnia collection of dip spots, and yes, it would also make great pumpkins or Indian corn. Um, the, the zinnias really go well with our flower power patterns, and they're great for flowers. If you're going to hook flowers like zinnias, um, sunflowers, and this one in particular, the zinnia bold, goes all the way down into, it looks like a great sunflower, a great bold zinnia. And you get the depth of all the color, but you also get motion. It's not a straight dip dye. That's why it's called a dip spot. You don't have the lines of color. It flows automatically. And when it flows automatically like that, then you're able to use this in a piece so that it flows like it was uh, fingered in. And to show you what I mean, 
this is the um, zinnia trio so you can use it to hook these petals any one of the zinnias and it will give you all of the colors that are in these zinnias not exactly we're not recreating mother nature if you want it to look exact i always say put it in a picture frame but this will give you the impression of these zinnias as you can see uh, this one actually matches this pretty well so that's how you can use them. You can use them in your fall rugs, uh, in anything you'd like. But that is a dip spot. And the dip spots are a little bit softer, look more like a dyed transition. This is one of our more popular dip spots. Vintage pumpkin label bold. It will make a beautiful beautiful pumpkin a beautiful sunset if you want an orange sunset on purple hills it works beautifully this is a this is a dip spot another um another thing is this is a spot die okay we're going back to just simple spot dies but it's a simple spot die that's modeled it's a modeled spot die for a worn look so if you're doing an oriental and you want a worn look and you don't want to have to finger in the lights and the darks, this will give you that worn look or an older look. And this is our deep purple. Again, it is a simple spot dye. It is not a tone on tone. There's different colors in it. But the way that it is put in in a modeled format gives you that worn look. That is also what our Amari dyed wools are like. Our Amari dyed wools um, Joan Moshimer formatted those so that they would look like an oriental rug. And a lot of you I know have used these in rugs like Herva, the Frost Oriental. They look like an oriental. They look like a worn piece. So you don't have to do the straight lines. You just have to hook. And they're called the Amaris. The Amaris are labeled that way so that they have all these highs and lows so when you hook them it has that look this is another amari this is the rose taupe and the rose taupe does have that look it's just a darker color so these are the amaris and there's a whole collection of colors in the amaris if you want to hook an oriental or if you just want to hook a primitive and you want to add some dyed wool for a warm look to make the rug look older, the Amaris are fabulous for that. Here is a tone-on-tone -tone spot. This is Santa Suit Red on Sparkle. This is on Sparkle. As you know, we have a storybook series of patterns, and the storybook series brought in a whole new avenue of dyed wool. Uh, this is a dip spot. This is storybook snow because of the colors. And it's not white snow. It's that cream color to give it the nostalgia look. Goes into almost a rose purple to a gray. So this is a dip spot for storybooks. We also have a storybook sky and different things. But this is to give you a nostalgia look. Uh, but it is a dip spot. That is the depth of it. We also have introduced, um, reintroduced something a little different. Uh, these are tricolors, and they're called tourmalines. Now, the tourmalines are faceted, like main tourmaline. They are faceted. And the faceted colors, this is uh, ocean waves, the faceted colors allow tones to come into these facets these are a beautiful beautiful piece they're great in abstracts they're great in florals uh, they have values that you don't even see until you hook it and as you hook it the values just pop up here and there and it makes for a beautiful beautiful piece a lot of times with a lot of these, they can be used for grass and sky. They can be used for water and waves. And that is the faceted tourmaline. And we have a limited number of the tourmalines. They're great so you can get all the facets. Here is another tourmaline. We have, I'll show you two more tourmalines. 
And this one is Hummingbird. So we've ended this in a beautiful, beautiful burgundy, maroon. Uh, the colors in between are beautiful. You can also wear these. Some people say they won't cut them. They like to wear them. Of course, you can wear these as well. But all these little interplay of color give you prism colors as you hook. And then you can use the yarn, and this also, a lot of times you'll see we have the yarn that's labeled like our wool. And when we have our dyed yarn, like our wool, it's great to bind with, but it will also punch like our dyed wool. So the last, and this is a bright, bright tourmaline. You can get bright colors with Cushing, especially if you use Flower Power Pink. And this is Bada Bing Cherry, a tad brighter. And this is where you can go from red all the way to a burgundy in one piece and have all the interplay of colors. So if you're looking to stash build in your dyed wool, a tourmaline, a dip spot, and a tricolor spot dye are ones for you to build your stash of dyed wool because you can use it as one piece, you can use it as three or four pieces. This is a raspberry sorbet, and while it is a dip spot, it is not as much of a tricolor. It is more of a two-color dip spot, and when we show them online, we try to show you the depth of the color. Uh, this is great for flowers, uh, great for anything you would like, but this is more of a two-color dip spot. Allows you to get the colors that you may need may use them in two different spots, two different rugs, but you can cut them either way to use them. This is another over dye on texture. Uh, this is Copley Square to give you bricks. A little bit more of the texture is showing through, which is great. It's lightly over dyed, and it gives you a nice look. Very nice look. This is a new line. It's called the Jacobs. It's for Jacobs Coat of Many Colors. And Jacobs Coat of Many Colors is a spot dye. And we have quite a few of these coming out. These are a little richer. Uh, they're more to pair with some textures. Uh, you can use them by themselves. This is just a typical spot dye. This is sapphire. This is a tone-on-tone -tone spot dye, a one spot, and this is Jacob's. You can see the boldness, and then the, this is the Jacob's coat. Um, the Jacob's coat we're going to introduce at Rug Hooking Week at Sauter Village, the entire collection, so we hope you stop by and look at it. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a quick preview of all the colors that are available. But this is a this is a really the Jacobs colors. If you've never used a dyed piece of wool or you want to experiment a little more into dyed wool, the Jacobs works. It's a softer color. If you're a bold rug hooker, you love the boldness, then a single spot like sapphire is a great way to go. And these that are left on the table, this is a bold interplay of tricolor. And this would be for a sunrise over the water, um, just many different things. And a lot of times when you have a piece like this in your stash and you don't know if you're gonna use it, you just have it hanging in your wool studio or where you hook, then all of a sudden you need something for a fall leaf or a pumpkin that's a little different. Or you need something for a strawberry or something for water. Uh, this will allow you to have this at your disposal to use where you might not normally buy it. it. You may not want to work with it as the whole piece, but you can work with it as a dissected piece. Tree trunks. You always should have a little purple in the tree trunks. And I owe that to Dick, the late Dick LaBarge who told us that. Little purple, a little teal. Makes wonderful tree trunks. Looks like a forest of trees and you don't have to finger in all these different little noodles, you would just pull and hook. So, another soft Monet's Garden. This is Monet's Garden. Light, 
again, would just make a beautiful scene. If you're just hooking a scene of flowers, all you have to do is cut and hook. Monet's Garden. This is Monet's Garden Light, and we have Monet's Garden Dark. A lot of people like to use this as a soft background as well. Fall Hydrangea. Yep, it looks just like Hydrangea in the fall, but it also is a good addition for snow. If you need to add something to a light blue, like a light blue texture, a pop of color, uh, that would also work. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson in dyed wool. If you would like to dye your own wool, a lot of, not, the, not these particular formulas, but there's over 70 formulas on how to dye spot dyes, dip dyes, and all sorts of tricolors, and also how to dye the yarn in beautiful wool. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna pan over to what's on my right, and these are the Jacobs colors. This is the depth and the richness of all the Jacobs colors. And we go from golds, beautiful golds. I know golds are hard to find. Deep reds. Uh, we have a tea green. We have all sorts of colors, right down to a peach. A dyed wool in a peach is very uh, difficult to find. Beautiful browns. So come see us. Rug Hooking Week in Souter is five weeks away. Rug Hooking Magazine will be there. It's a beautiful rug show. And I hope you'll stop by the W. Cushing booth just to say hello. We'll see you all at Rug Hooking Week at Sauter Village. Have a nice day.